system that monitors and enables patients, caregivers, and pharmacists to collaborate and successfully implement treatment action plans. So without further ado, David Parker. First of all, I'd like to thank Luminary Labs and SNLP for this wonderful opportunity. It really is a privilege and an honor to be here tonight. I'm here with our co-founder, Gopi Mami Dupudi. I'm David Parkhart, CEO of Socially Relevant Technologies, and our team is going to save 500,000 lives this decade. I'm here to introduce iRetainRx technology for adherence to help you take your medications appropriately and help pharmacists present, prevent the pitfalls of medication non-adherence for all patients and increase refill rates. Have you ever gone to the doctor and pharmacy and later you get home and someone asks you, what did they say? And you honestly don't know? <laughs> this causes people to take their medications inappropriately, which causes 125,000 unnecessary deaths and $290 billion in additional costs. Now, people with diabetes are challenged by their regimens. We look at the numbers, and less than two-thirds of people with diabetes are adhering to the four interventions. Now, for pharmacists and drug manufacturers, that means lower refill rates. But for you and I as American taxpayers, that means $37 billion in additional costs. And that leads then to huge social, huge social, huge social costs. So there's something missing, and I Retain RX is here to address this crisis now. I Retain RX is like a good friend to aid patients who need more than just a doctor's prescription. It's a mobile companion to aid patients through their treatment plan. Now, I Retain RX is more than just a mobile app. I Retain RX is a platform which enables healthcare organizations to plug in and to, to deliver um, effective, patient-centered, medication adherence outreach. For you, the patient, what we're doing is we're helping you take your medications appropriately. And we're opening up communication channels between you, the patient, your pharmacist, and your caregivers. And that may be your doctors, but it may also be the people who just identify as good friends, or mom, or a good son. When a patient goes to the pharmacy to pick up their medications, the moment they hand the medication to the pharmacist, the pharmacist hands the medication, this is called the over 90 consult. And so what we're doing is we are helping pharmacists to prevent pitfalls of medication non-adherence for all patients by optimizing the over 90 consult and making it available to you, the patient, and available to your caregivers, or allowing you to share that with your caregivers when you get home. Now, easy enough, one of the cool things we're doing is smart technology, right? It'd be easy to distribute NFC tags, little stickers that we could take off and put onto a bottle at this touch point. Additionally, we can take a little wallet card. When, with NFC technology, that can go into the wallet and provide a personal medication record, which can grow and evolve with doctor visits, while at home as you're using the application, and so forth. And this is vital in an emergency when an EMT comes. Now for patients, we're providing free to the marketplace, and sorry, for pharmacists, we're delivering this over 90 in conjunction with the American Pharmacists Association and the California Pharmacists Association, free to independent pharmacists. There's 24,000 of those out there in the marketplace. For patients, we're delivering free to patients tools that help you take your medications appropriately. And specifically, the interface for diabetes is awesome. <laughs> right? NFC is a great touch point, so you could access a mobile app just as normal. But NFC allows us to simply touch and bring up an action. I can touch my pill bottle, and it can tell me exactly what I need to do next. And for patients, what we're doing with this platform is simplifying, informing, motivating, and rewarding them as they go through their treatment plan. Now, specifically for patients with diabetes, we talk about four adherence pieces or four intervention pieces. We've got our medications, which are important. We also have nutrition. We've got uh, activity. And so what we're doing is making it easy to monitor and track those things, too. 
right? With a simple touch, you can bring up the app and finally get to know your number. Now, we're building our core competencies enable us to do multimodal distribution so we can do multiple touch points. We also have core competencies in big data and optimization and personalization. So we're creating a retention risk index to predict non-adherence. Then what we're doing is delivering that index back to providers, pharmacists or prescribers, and allowing us to intervene early for people who are having adherence challenges. And one of the ways we're doing that is through medication therapy management with the pharmacist, either face-to-face -face or remote. Let's, essentially what we're doing for patients is really trying to take this big idea of a treatment plan and, you know, for a nephrology patient, for example, or sort of for a dialysis patient, they're on eight medications, right? So we're trying to take this big treatment plan and shrink it down into something that's very simple and actionable. Would you go ahead and start the video for us so we can see how Courtney might use this? This means I'm at the doctor's a lot. I need all the help I can get. My mom is great. She helps me out by coming to all my appointments. Mom gets a prescription at the pharmacy and also gets counseling with the pharmacist and help from my retainer X. They provide meds with the containers that have smart stickers. I can touch the sticker with my phone and my phone's app tells me what to do. In the past, I was confused a lot about my meds and what the doctors told me. Mom was always worrying about me. I didn't know what to do about my numbers and what they meant. But now, with iRetainerX and my phone app, I know what to do. My mom knows how to help me with my diabetes. Now I can do the things I want to do. iRetainerX is a friend who is absolutely necessary for me to survive. And best of all, my mom doesn't worry so much. And again, this reminds us why we've got so many great people here in this room tonight. It's really to affect and improve the lives of people who are you know, living and dying with diabetes. The question always comes up for us about these smart stickers. And NFC is a, a technology that's now in most new mobile devices. But it's not the only touch point. But the NFC touch point is a valuable touch point because it's very user friendly and it's low cost. These devices, uh, these cards could be distributed at less than $1.50 per unit and provide a smart personal medication record that every person could have in their wallet, which would help with drug reconciliation as well as in the case of an emergency. Our team includes um, scientists, or doctorates in medical science, computer science, uh, predictive algorithms and mathematics and optimization, we also have leaders in behavioral economics as well as consumer engagement strategies and social inclusion strategies on our team. We've got a world-class group of advisors working with us, including state and national associations for pharmacists. And again, essentially what we're doing here is we are helping pharmacists, the independent guys who can't afford a lot of great technology, we're helping them to optimize the over 90 consultation when the patient picks up the medication for all patients for free. We're then allowing patients and caregivers to access that information when they get home and to be able to engage caregivers in the, to support patients. With patients, we're breaking it down into the next right thing and rewarding patients as they go through their treatment plan. We're tracking all of this, we're identifying people who are having trouble and we let the providers know that they're having trouble so we can intervene early. Now, medication therapy management, many of you not, may not know this, but in the future, doctors of pharmacy are going to have to start acting more like doctors. They're going to be the co-pilots working with the prescriber team in order to prevent patients from having you know, uh, adverse effects and engaging patients in their treatment. Now, medication therapy management is a huge opportunity for pharmacists, for patients, and for payers. What we do for the independents, again, is give them all of this technology for free. If they want to do medication therapy management, we provide an end-to-end -end service, including billing for that. Now, MTM is a huge opportunity for these independent guys, so what we're doing is um, taking 5% of gross revenues, so if they can make 300000 on this, we take 15000 or $15 million per thousand pharmacies. It's estimated that 24, sorry, it's estimated that 12 million Medicare recipients right now are eligible for medication therapy management with their pharmacists, and we're seeing private payers looking to get into that, the medication therapy management 
pay your pay your bill too. Again, we help pharmacists. The independence in the market pays by providing something free, free of charge. Now other health organizations can tap in and plug into this. Um, we streamlined the over 90 process for all pharmacists and opened up a new revenue channel while helping patients take their medications appropriately. We are seeking seed funding of $500,000 to launch the over 90 and free services for patients. And we are going to be launching a pilot in Texas and California in conjunction with Dallas Nephrology and the California ne uh, Pharmacy Association. Bottom line here, I retain RX is going to save lives, it's going to cut health care costs, and it's going to provide revenue opportunities for pharmacists and investors. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, David. Any questions? Sue. Great presentation. How, how do you think about any of the regulatory issues that will surround the um, retention risk index? And, you know, potentially when they're also traveling, right? Because patients might go cross state mm -hmm. and pharmacies cross state. So I'm curious how you're thinking about that and how we are thinking about the regulatory pieces of this a lot. And so what we've done is brought on chief security officers from two well-known cloud-based uh, healthcare companies to advise us on this, as well as somebody who's on the National Healthcare IT Advisory Board. Uh, so Gopi and the rest of our team are working closely uh, on this, but it, it is a significant item that we are acutely aware of. John. I guess more specifically, does this require FDA clearance? Uh, we are going to navigate so that it does not require FDA clearance. So I have two questions. Uh, after a couple of decades of industry focus on adherence programs, which have for the most part all failed, uh, a lot of aspects of adherence are really not about the drug themselves, but more about lifestyle and other things. How do you see this addressing some of those key elements in terms of sustainable behavior? You know, the opportunities are to tap into external motivators as well as internal motivators. Dr. Paul's research in the Cal State is in behavioral economics, and what he finds is that when people feel cared for, it drives outcome. He's identified several factors in this. Um, so we're looking at these different pieces of both extrinsic and intrinsic rewards. Uh, there's an opportunity with social nudging. Uh, you know, so these are, these are the different places that we're playing with. And it also comes down to, um, you know, we can't do a one-size-fits-all for people, right? So again, Holly Jen and our team of uh, optimization experts at Stanford University, right, they're building this so that, again, the algorithms are about providing personalized content, as well as useful numbers, you know, to providers. Um, follow up in your, in your pilots that are planned, can you talk a little bit about, uh, I'm assuming those are going to be outcome-based pilots in terms of finding real-life evidence improvements. Can you talk a little bit about some of the ways you plan to look at that and how you plan to measure the impact? So we just closed the deal with Dallas Nephrology, the second largest group of nephrologists last week. I flew down and I met with their CEO on Wednesday, so this is very early. Additionally, we're working with a big foundation in the Bay Area and to participate with them in their uh, CMS grant proposal to deliver in, uh, in nursing homes, uh, both adherence programs and MTM. There's a lot of pieces to that, and I don't know that we could go there, but I mean, it's, uh, a lot of this is fresh. We're moving very fast. <laughs> yes, ma'am. But then in your revenue model, and as you went further, you didn't say anything further about nutrition. Is there a revenue opportunity for nutrition, and exactly how the nutrition time what you're doing? So, wow. So we see probably about 15 revenue opportunities on the back end of this platform, right? This is built for partnerships. We're going out as free as a business model, cloud-based solution, really looking to tie things together. Uh, the nutrition piece, we're making very simple 
uh, tools additionally. Uh, just being conscientious of what you're eating and being able to take a picture and maybe change, uh, you know, counting carbs or something, be able to do that. We know that just raising the consciousness has an effect on eating habits. So the initial opportunity here is focused on medication. We're opening it up for other useful tools, uh, which we see other third parties creating innovation on top. Uh, great presentation. I just, I'm curious, NFC is very, very nascent mm -hmm. in its uh, adoption curve. How, how does the technical or business model change in a world where like 1% that have the infrastructure for that piece. Does the rest of it fit? I didn't quite connect all the dots as to what the rate limiting step of the NFC tapping does. So NFC does. is just a cool touch point. And we know in 2015, 58% of the manufactured devices in the marketplace will have NFC capability. So looking forward, it's a great touch point. Right now, it's a bit early. So mobile applications, SMS, voice, these are pieces that we're distributing. But we're highlighting the opportunity here for a personal medication record that could go in your wallet to help with drug reconciliation. And I think that's kind of the takeaway here early on in the marketplace with NFC. See one more question. I mean, you're right about the many, many revenue opportunities, assuming this can get embedded. What stops others? What's the barrier to entry um, associated to this? For small companies, they would have a hard time catching up with us. Um, my co-founders, Dr. Gala and Samuel Shetta, computer scientists, have invested over a million dollars in four years building m 2 Serve, which is a cloud-based technology. We've got applications on the market licensed to some of the biggest players in the global marketplace. So one. One example is uh, Pandora plus iTunes in the cloud delivered for the Indian market through the biggest chip company in the world. Um, you know, so we're building big applications, but the back end is there, and so now we're building out those front ends for pharmacists and patients. Uh, for bigger players to move in, potentially it would be difficult to be as agile. Uh, I mean, that's one of the advantages of being in Silicon Valley. Um, and being a small company as we can move quickly. Great, thank you so much, David and Gopi. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone.